I needed to take a break from some big vintage computer projects to work on something much more modern, my wireless headphones. But what started as a common problem turned into a much easier fix than I was expecting. And you can do it too. My Bose QC35 headphones haven't been working right. Every time I'd take them out of their case, the battery would be dead. If I charged them up, they'd work fine, but sure enough, a couple days later, the battery would be almost flat. Battery low. Please charge now. My first thought was that their built-in lithium-ion battery was wearing out. But what I found was much simpler. It turns out that the power switch was actually the culprit. Sometimes I'd go to turn them off, and they'd stay on. But more often, if they were already off, they'd turn themselves on and run down the battery. Occasionally, the reverse was true. I'd try to turn them on, even with a fully charged battery, and they just wouldn't. It's due to a design flaw. Since the switch is on the face of the ear cup, the lid of their carrying case puts pressure on it and wears it out. The good news is that it's not difficult to fix yourself. I started by removing the pad on the right ear cup. It's attached with small clips and with some gentle prying with a plastic spudger, it just pops right off. Next, I peeled away the fabric covering, which is held on with double-sided tape on opposite sides. This reveals three Phillips head screws that need to come out, and I found a number 00 driver to be the best fit to keep from stripping the heads. Then I could lift away the outside metal cover to get access to the electronics inside. Based on the circuit board markings, the QC35 went by the internal code name Wolf Castle. This PCB also has one of the microphones used for noise cancelling with a chip from Qualcomm nearby that handles Bluetooth and digital signal processing. It's a pretty interesting chip with an 80 MHz processor and 2 MB of built-in flash memory for its programming, though I don't think it handles the noise cancelling function. Here's what we're after, the faulty switch, so I pulled off the cover. It's made by a company called C&K, and I ordered a few replacements just to be safe. It's an interesting switch in that it has two fixed positions for off and on, but also a third momentary one which puts the headphones into pairing mode. It's a surface mount part and needing to solder an entirely new switch in place would dramatically raise the complexity of this repair. But I had a hunch there was an easier way. Since I ordered multiple switches, I took one apart out of curiosity. There's only four components, the metal cover on top, which is just clipped to the plastic base. Inside is the switch slider with its metal contacts, along with a spring to handle that momentary function. The slider is the most likely thing to wear out, so what if I could replace just that part? I carefully popped the cover off the switch in the headphones and took out the slider and spring. The contacts in the base looked a little dirty, so I used an alcohol wipe to clean them up. I had to use the pointed tip of a spudger to get in there, but it did pick up a small bit of dirt. Then I could grab the new slider from the switch I disassembled and install the spring, which goes into a little pocket on one end. The trickiest part was putting in the new slider and making sure the spring was facing the right way, but after that, I could snap the metal cover back on. So, did that fix it? Battery 100%. Battery 100%. Yes, the headphones turned on and off just like they should, and the switch itself felt a lot more solid and clicky than before, a sign that the slider had indeed worn out and was causing all the problems. It was just a matter of putting them back together, which only took a minute. You do need a few tools, a small screwdriver, spudger, and pair of tweezers, plus magnification if you can, but the fact that this repair can be done without soldering at all makes it way more accessible to people who don't have much experience doing this sort of thing. While I was at it, I decided to do something about my worn out ear pads, since the leather was peeling and flaking off. I picked up a pair of third-party replacements, which can always be a gamble when it comes to quality. 
They came with new fabric covers along with a plastic pry tool. The pads themselves actually look pretty good, practically identical to the originals, at least in terms of size and shape. The fabric covers are a bit different though, with the pattern being printed on instead of woven in like the originals. I ended up reinstalling the original fabric covers, putting some of my own new double-sided tape in place to secure them. If you use the new covers, they have the tape pre-installed, which is certainly convenient. Then the new pads just clipped to the ear cups with some firm pressure, and these headphones were looking like new again. I found that the fake leather of the new pads has a slightly different feel than the originals, but that may change over time as they wear. This whole repair took maybe a half an hour, but what's even better was its cost. The ear pads were $12 US and the switches were under $2 each. With shipping, the total was about 20 bucks for everything. Bose doesn't really repair out of warranty devices, they just offer you a discount on a new one instead. In this case, they wanted to sell me a pair of new QuietComfort SCs for $260. But that's not that great of a deal since I found these in store for $320. If I really didn't want to deal with fixing these, or if they had another problem I couldn't fix, the better option is to check out their refurbished products. A pair of QC45s go for $180. While it's nice that Bose sells some replacement parts, they're a bit overpriced. Like $34 for new ear pads. For about a tenth of what a replacement pair of headphones would have cost, I was able to fix my own, and it was far easier than I was expecting. I'll include links to all the parts I used in the video description, so if you're having this problem with your own Bose QC35s or 45s, you too can tackle this repair. No experience necessary. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Here's another episode you should check out. And as always, thanks for watching.